What's up, comic book? Christian Hoffer here, and I'm here with Ryan Miller, and we are going to play the first ever game of Lorcana in the state of Tennessee. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah there okay, we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, Disney Lorcana, it's the brand new card game that everyone is going to be talking about for the rest of the year, and luckily, I have probably the one of the best people to teach me how to play. So, uh, so how do I how do I beat you in this? Oh well, that's a different story. Only that's a different question than how do you play. I got to say, um, luckily though, I'm I like of the two designers. So I designed it with my friend Steve Warner. He's way better. So beating me is pretty good. Beating him is like you should you should get a medal for that. Uh, but all right, so let's just you know let's kick it off. So in this game, you take on the role of an illumineer. Okay. Right? That's someone who has the ability to use magic ink. You summon glimmers of Disney characters off of the page. You go on a quest with mm -hmm. your glimmers. First player to complete their quest wins. Uh, you complete your quest by getting 20 lore points. Now, today we're going to play to 10. That's fair. That's fair. Just as it kind of get a taste of the game. Uh, but know that it's, normally it's 20 points. And so, well, let's talk a bit about the ink that I mentioned before. Yes. Now, first of all, go ahead and draw your seven cards there. And that's your opening hand. You you can you can look at it, but I don't recommend you showing it to me. Okay. Uh, but see, I can kind of see it right oh, there. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's true. Okay. We are uh, kind of angled. At an angle, yes. Yeah, normally yeah. across the table, but here we are here. So, uh, now, um, most cards can be used as ink, and you'll know it can be used as ink because it has that right above there on the top left, you see this kind of gold swirl. We call it okay. the, the ink icon there. Now, most cards in the starter decks we're playing here have that. So, mm -hmm. most cards can be used as ink. Uh, some cards don't have it, uh, and that just simply means you cannot use it as ink. Now, ink is the resource of the game. It's what you use to pay for your cards and get them out onto the board. Mm -hmm. To use a card as ink, you simply just show it to your opponent to say, hey, look, it's got the uh, icon on it. And then you put it face down into your ink well. And now once it's an ink card, it's one, it counts as one single ink. Mm -hmm. doesn't matter what's on the other side. doesn't matter any of the numbers. None of that matters. Once you put it face down, it is now one ink. And that number at the top left, yeah. uh, that's how much ink you have to use in order to play the card. Okay. Right? So Olaf here costs one ink. I simply use, we call it exerting, you just turn the card sideways to show that you've used it, right? Mm -hmm. And then you put that card out in front of you. And now we can talk about characters, because I have a character here. See, I've sneakily taken the first turn. Oh, too, yeah, like that. Just totally cheated. Uh, okay, so, now we'll start over. But uh, characters are the most important card, I would say, because they are the best way to gain lore, which is how you win the game. Mm -hmm. The first thing you should know about characters are that the turn you play them, they can't do anything at all. Their ink has not dried. Ah, yeah, right? You gotta okay. wait for the ink to dry in your yeah, card. I see that. You play it now to get all smudged. Uh, but once the ink is dry, there's a couple options you have. The first one is to quest. And that quest is simply you exert the card, turn it sideways, and you're going to get one lore for each of these lore icons on the right side of the text box. What is the official? Are those are those just called lore icons? Are those called pips? I, I, I... <laughs> they're not called pips. That's just not a dice. Uh, no, they're lore icons there. Most, cards will, most characters will give you one. Some give two, three, or four. Uh, but basically, every turn I can quest with my character. And, and add that lore to my total, okay. right? And trying to be the first. Now, your opponent's also doing that. So the other option you have with your characters is to challenge. Challenging is basically kind of like a duel, um, and generally speaking, the, the loser of a challenge goes away. So that is how you slow your opponent down. You don't actually win the game by challenging your opponent's characters, but you do slow them mm -hmm. down so that you can win the game, right? So those are the two basic options with character cards. Um, we also have a couple other cards. We have action cards. Action cards are kind of a one-shot, like we have Hakuna Matata here. You pay its ink cost, you do what the card says, and then it goes to your discard pile. And then we have item cards, which I don't have any in my hand right now. Oh, I, I have one. You have oh, one, look yes. Look at, look at you, look you've that. got the stolen scimitar. So item cards are really easy to spot because they have this gold border around the art. Oh. Item cards stay in play once you play them, and they generally just have some ability that helps you or your characters. Their ink dries right away, so as soon as you play them, you can start using them. That's pretty much the game right there. I mean, there's a bit more to it, but those are the broad, uh, the broad uh, rules there. On your turn, you always start with, with ready, set, draw. Okay. Um, ready just means that all your cards that you have out that are exerted, you put them back to the ready position so you get to use them again. Mm -hmm. um, set just means if you have any cards that have like at the beginning of your turn, do this or that. Now our decks are starter decks, we don't have any of those. And then draw. I'm gonna guess what that does. No, let's make draw, draw a card from your deck. There you go. Yeah, yes, okay. you're you know you're mm -hmm. on your way to be another kind of player. So um, now the first player of the game doesn't get to draw the card because being first gives you a slight advantage. So we take some of that advantage away by not letting you draw a card. Now you know what? Let's start a real game now. I've okay. told you some of the basics. We're gonna shuffle up, draw seven, and then we're gonna roll as he goes first. Now, oh, this is okay. how I like to do it. Instead of us rolling off, I just call you odd. 
like Christian, you're odd. Oh, that's. And then I roll a die, and it's even, so I go first. Oh. Awesome. See, that's how that works. So not only do you quickly decide who goes first, but you get to insult your opponent right off the bat. Right? I, so it I, kind of I takes feel, them out of the game a little bit. I feel bad, and you have the psychological <laughs> advantage. <laughs> now we let you do something called altering your cards. Um, other games might call it a mulligan or something like that, but basically, you uh, when you first draw your card, your cards, you get to like pick some cards out that you're like, you know what, I don't, I don't think I want that in my opening hand. Uh, usually for me, it's the higher costing cards mm -hmm. for this deck. Uh, your deck, depending on what you want your deck to do, could be different. But in this case, I'm going to take a couple of these high, these four cost cards and just put them down. And then I get to redraw. So I put two cards down, I get to draw two cards, and now I'm going to shuffle these cards that I put back in my deck. So it's, we call it altering your starting hand. And basically allows you, like, also if you draw too many cards with no ink, that might be another reason, yeah. right? To get, you know, to, to hopefully draw more ink, because you're going to need your ink. I think I'm going to mulligan two. Okay. Mm -hmm. right, okay. Oh yeah, see I got a card here, Rafiki, who doesn't, you can't be played as ink, right? So that's a... And mainly, these cards that can't be, can't be used as ink, the main consideration there is you don't want to put too many of those in your, in your yeah. deck, right? If you fill your deck with too many of those, you might get stymied when you're trying to like get a bunch of ink in your ink well. That's kind of like the, the grand balance of any card game. How much mana do you put in your magic deck? How many energy cards do you put in your Pokemon deck? Sure, it's, yeah, it's, 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 you know, and it makes, uh, I mean, there's a bunch of nerdy game design reasons for it, but what I like about it is it, is it gives you kind of an early game, a mid game, and a late game, mm -hmm. and decks can, there's different decks that thrive in each of those different areas, right? Like this is an early game deck right here that I'm playing. Uh, yours is more of a late game deck, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. All right, so I'm going to take my turn. Now, ready, set, draw for me because I, I don't have anything to ready or set, and mm -hmm. I can't draw because I'm the first player. I just skip that entirely, and I go straight to what we call our main phase. And the main phase, you can do anything you want in any order you want. You could play one ink per turn. So okay. I can take one card from your hand per turn, put it down as ink, and then I could play as many cards as I have ink to pay for it. I can use any characters whose ink has already dried. I can do all sorts of stuff, right? Now, first turns are generally pretty quick, right? Like, I'm going to take this Jafar card, show it to you. Like, got ink. I put it face down. Now it's one ink. I'm going to exert that, and I'm going to play Pascal. I've got Pascal. He's really fun. Uh, you can see here, he's even starting to blend into his own card a little bit there. <laughs> now, I can't do anything else. I've spent all my ink. My character's ink is not dried yet, so I pass the turn to you. You're going to ready, set, draw. Okay, so uh, I have nothing to ready, uh, nothing to set, and so I shall draw a card. Um, I am going to... Well, let's see here. Don't have any card. I don't have any character cards I can play. Uh, however, I am going to put uh, Horus mm -hmm. as, uh, and you can see here, yep. ink. I'll put it in my inkwell, and then I shall pass it back to you. Mm, you're already behind. All right, I, I like I this. I like this. Remember, the stakes could not be lower yes. in this game. Okay, so just. We are playing for the first Lorcana <laughs> winner of the state of Tennessee. That's true, that's true. It's like the Tennessee state champion right there. Yeah, there's a special crown. I didn't tell you about it, but there's a crown. All right, I'm going to put mini uh, as ink. Now okay. I have two ink to use, um, but luckily I have a second mini. You might have been sad that I was putting mini in my inkwell, but I have another one of her. So, oh, wow. Uh, that's Minnie Mouse, uh, beloved princess, uh, and is absolutely in my princess deck. All right, so now I've got Pascal, his ink is dried. Uh, my two options are to quest, which means I exert him, and in this case gain one, because he's okay. got one lore icon there. Um, you don't have any characters to challenge, so I don't have that option with that. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to exert him to quest. That will put me at one lore, and because we're playing to ten, I am now 10% there. So, your mm, turn. That, that's, this, that's harsh. <laughs> okay, uh, so I'm going to uh, draw a card. Uh, that's, a, that's a good card for later, but doesn't do me much good now. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Vicious Betrayal in my inkwell, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to exert both of those, uh, and I'm going to get Aladdin out nice. onto the deck. Now, a, a quick question, because I noticed that, you know, uh, there's there's six colors of ink. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, emerald ink? That's right, emerald. Uh, so, uh, what, what, what is, what's the gist of some of these different types of inks? So, um, each ink has its own personality, both uh, from a thematic standpoint and for the game mechanics that that ink can do. Uh, emerald, for example, we consider that very uh, flexible. It's, it's, it's all about giving you different options of giving you what you can do. In this case, um, Aladdin here has Ward, which makes it harder for me to choose him when I'm choosing. Like if I have an uh, action card that has a chosen character, it takes two damage. Well, I couldn't choose him because he says Ward. But it, they tend to give you lots of options and, and they tend to have, a, they, they kind of dabble in a lot of different mechanics. Uh, I'm playing a, a deck that is uh, Amethyst and Amber. Uh, Amethyst cards are more about mysticism and magic. 
Uh, whereas amber is more about friendship or teamwork or things like that. Okay. Uh, your other color is ruby. That is a color of daring. So it's very bold. It's, uh, you know, doesn't think things through. It just kind of dives in, that sort of thing. Uh, so, and then the mechanics, the game mechanics that we have assigned to those kind of follow those, those types of things. And so you might have a ruby card that can challenge the turn you play it. Because it's daring. It's going to jump right in. I mean, normally you can't do that, but this, this one can. So you've played your Latin. Yep, and I can't do anything else, so okay. it's uh, your turn. All right, so ready, set, draw. Um, ooh, one of my favorite cards, outstanding. Well, I'm gonna put control your temper into my inkwell. No, I will not be controlling my temper today. I'm going to pay three ink to play Maleficent, uh -oh. Sorceress. He has an ability called Cast My Spell. When you play this character, you may draw a card. Thank you. Uh, I don't have any ink but that's okay. I do have two characters whose ink has dried. So we can talk a bit about challenging at this stage because you have a character out. The first thing you have to know about challenging is you can only challenge an opponent's character if that character was already exerted. Okay. So think of it like when they're ready, they are safe. When they're exerted, they are vulnerable because they can be chosen as a challenge. Um, you don't have any exerted characters, so I can't challenge. So basically you always get to do something with your character before it can be challenged, right? Mm -hmm. um, but let's pretend uh, for this example that you had you know, you had an exerted Aladdin. Uh, to challenge, I have to exert my challenger, which means I can't use it to quest, right? And that's where these numbers on the card come into play. That first number there that's in the circle, that is strength. Mm -hmm. The second is willpower. Now, in a challenge, I'll put the cards next to each other here, each character is going to deal damage to the other equal to its strength. So in this case, both characters, and we use counters for this because damage is permanent. It stays on a character until it's removed. Um, Minnie Mouse will put two damage on Aladdin. Aladdin will also put two damage on Minnie Mouse, and that's where willpower comes into play. If the damage on a character is at least as high as its willpower, it is banished and goes to the discard pile. So in, if this challenge were to happen in this example here, the end result would be Aladdin would be in the discard pile and Minnie would have two damage on her, which means in the future it would only take one more damage okay. to banish her to the discard pile. So that is how challenging works. But right off the bat, you know that I can't challenge Aladdin because Aladdin is not exerted. So my options here are to uh, either quest with them and gain two points. Or if I'm worried, like if I just want to keep them safe, I might do nothing with them, right? I might just leave them ready because when they're ready, they're, they're, they can't be challenged. But I'm not going to do that. That's not what this deck is about. So I'm going to quest with Pascal for one lore and I'm going to quest with Minnie Mouse for one lore. Now I do want to point out an ability that Pascal has. He has camouflage. While you have another character, this character gains evasive. And what that means is that uh, a character with evasive can only be challenged by another character with evasive. Okay. So Pascal's really hard to find. You have to have a card in your deck that will, that, or you have to have a character that has evasive in order to challenge him. So he's pretty safe. As long as I have other characters, he has evasive. So I'm going to point that out as a bit of an advantage I have on the board right now, you know. All right, and I will pass the turn to you, sir. Okay, so I'm going to ready my ink one. Uh, and I'm going to draw. Um, so, uh, okay, so first thing I want to do, now I have some choices here. I think I'm going to put uh, Megara in, uh, or Megara, Megara. I call her Mega. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, that's, it's like, I see her full name here. It's yeah. like, you know, it's like. It's like when you're in trouble and you're, your parent yeah. uses your full name and you know. Well, she is in trouble because yeah. she's going into the inkwell. Uh, so, uh, uh, so I put her in and then I am going to go and throw out uh, Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse. Yeah, Steamboat Pilot. Oh, um, yeah, I love that card. That's my one of my favorite pieces of art in the yeah, world. Yeah, oh man. Uh, I mean. So fun. You know, just, just you know, stepping it back from a little bit. I love the fact that the first set of Disney Lorcana has Mickey Mouse's first appearance on it. Yeah, no, so, we had to do that. You know, we had to do that. It makes so much sense. Um, yeah. And also, you know, I, I like that it kind of teases that, you know, we're, we're going all the way back into Disney history. You know, any anything can pop up in yeah, this Yeah, we're game. doing some really fun stuff. Don't forget to pay oh, your yeah, name, yeah, cheater. I, I make me call about a judge that. over here, okay? I, I, I had forgotten about mm, that. Forgotten. Uh, okay. So well, Mickey's Mickey's uh, drawing still, but I can do something with Aladdin now. I think that you know I would like to get some points. I mean, I could double your score right now. Yeah. But yeah. It's my math nerd joke of the day there. Uh, but um. Two times zero is zero. That's that's what that means. Yeah. But uh, but I think well. <laughs> And here's the other thing, like even if I were to challenge Minnie Mouse, uh, I wouldn't knock her off the board. So. Right, you would just make her easier to challenge in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I, I think I see where you're going and I'm kind of with you. If you just want a point, I think Yeah, I, I think I'm just gonna take the point and hope that I can do something here. And he's on the board. Yeah, there we go. Things not looking too good for me. <laughs> That's okay. You're, 
And you're playing Ryan Miller. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna race set draw. <laughs> uh, ooh, hey, that's cool. Um, I am going to put poor Stitch. I love Stitch, but I'm gonna use him for ink today. He's still helping me. He just has ink. That's fine. Um, and we're I'm gonna play Cinderella. Mental and kind. She costs four ink. Um, now she has an ability called Singer, and I'd love to chat about that really quickly. Mm -hmm. So um, we I mentioned this. Uh, before we have uh, a type of action card, so I talked about you know action cards are those cards that uh, you know you kind of you play for an effect and they go to the discard pile. There's a subset of them called songs. So Hakuna Matata here. Um, what that means is you can play a song normally, just like any action. Pay its ink cost, do what it says. In this case, I could remove up to three damage from each of my characters for Hakuna Matata. Oh, um, or you can have a character, one of your characters sing it for you. And that means you don't spend things. So let's say this was in my hand, this is my situation here. Um, the only rule is that the character that sings it, their cost has to be at least as high as the cost of the song. So uh. Pascal can't sing Hakuna Matata. Minnie Mouse can't sing Hakuna Matata. As much as we'd love to hear that, uh, yeah, right? Yeah. Maleficent can't sing it. But Cinderella here can, but her, her cost is four. So you exert, which means of course I can't quest or challenge with her. You play the card. It's kind of a strategic decision because I, I still have my ink. I didn't have to pay the ink for it because I had a character sing it for me. Now, the reason I brought all this up is her ability, Singer 5, means that even though her cost is 4, she can sing songs that cost oh, up to 5. So she's okay. a little better at singing. So I cheated and pulled this card out, so I'm just going to put it back there. Um, but And I got that. So she, her ink is dry there. It's one of my favorite uh, mechanics uh, for a lot of reasons. Obviously, it's very thematic. It's very fun. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also impossible to not sing the song oh, when, yeah. when you play Hakuna Matata. One of my favorites is, uh, is Let It Go. Uh, because you, uh, what Let It Go does is it takes a character and puts it in your opponent's inkwell, or puts it in that player's inkwell. Mm -hmm. So basically kind of gets rid of the character. And so you have to sing Let It Go, and you're like, let it go, let it go. You know, you just kind of, it's just so much fun. And when you have a room full of people playing Lorcana, you'll just hear random people singing random songs. It's so fun. Anyway, I've got three characters whose ink is dried, and I'm thinking that it's time. I'm going to look at what you're doing there. Okay. Ooh, yeah, Mickey Mouse is, you know what? I'm going for it. So I'm going to, Quest for one, for two, for three total. I go up to six. Ouch. Put some pressure on you there, and I will pass the turn to you. Okay. So I'm going to reset my board and draw. Okay. Well, uh, I think what I am going to do here is I'm going to put another. I have Horace. That's the second time I've put him. Well, he's in a henchman. He helps you. Yeah, right? exactly. So it just makes sense. I, that I he's don't your feel. Right I don't now. feel it's bad. He's. he's <laughs> You know, he, he doesn't have any special abilities. Uh, and I'm going to spend all of my ink uh, to uh, get Pongo out on Pongo! The yeah, there we go. Awesome, um, and Pongo is evasive. Yes. So Pascal's, Pascal's in trouble. Yeah, exactly. Now, he can't challenge this turn, so maybe I don't challenge, maybe I don't quest with Pascal next turn, but there, there we are. Uh, so, and then I am going to go and use Aladdin to challenge Maleficent. Okay, so let's do them one at a time here. Yep. Um, they both have two strength and two willpower, so the end result is both of them yep. will be banished and put in the discard pile. No need to put damage on them, they're just going straight to the discard yep. pile. And then I will use Mickey Mouse to challenge oh. Minnie Mouse, which oh. I, I feel a little bit bad about. You should. In fact, I don't think you should do it. No, I think uh, I think I need to. Oh. Otherwise, this is going to be a very short video. Okay, fine. All right. Well, Minnie and Mickey have a bit of an argument, mm -hmm. right? So it makes him sad with two points on him. Uh, but of course, that's plenty. Uh, he has three strengths, so that's plenty for Minnie Mouse. She's going to... She's gonna go away. Okay. She's, you know, she's gonna go on vacation. She's, you know, it, it's fine. It'll listen, be fine. Listen, sometimes things are just in black and white. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> oh man, I'm glad you have a real job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stick with your day job. Uh, I'm, that, kidding, I'm kidding. And that is that is my turn. That's not bad. That's not bad. I must say. Okay, so I'm gonna ready, set, draw. Um, oh, I just drew another of my favorite cards. Okay, so I'm gonna put the wardrobe. She is going in the ink. Okay. Okay. That's my terrible French accent. Um, I'm going to play Ariel on human legs. And one of the reasons one of my favorite cards is the story this card tells is kind of delightful. She's on human legs, you know, so that means she's already given up her voice mm -hmm. to Ursula. She So her ability is called voiceless. She can't sing songs. Oh. And then her quote on her own card is just dot, dot, dot. And I even have one ink left, but I am not going to use it. Um, you have, your Mickey Mouse should be exerted. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah thank mm -hmm. you for pointing mm -hmm. that out. Mm-hmm. You are just trying to everything, aren't you? You know, so 
I'm actually going to go ahead and just go for it. Yep. So I'm going to go, I'm going to get one point for Pascal and two points for Cinderella. That puts me at nine because that really puts you on the ropes there. Yep. Now normally we'd be playing to 20. This would be more of a mid-game kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. You'd still be like, okay, you know, but nine to one, I guess I expected a little more of you, Christian. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> your Ouch. turn, your turn. Okay. Uh, well, I'm going to reset everything. Um, and uh, then I'm going to draw my card. Don't forget to reset Mickey. Oh, yeah, he comes back Mickey, to help you out. Yeah, no, thank, thank goodness for that. I, just, I think he still um, feels bad about the whole mini thing. So uh, yeah. That's why he didn't want it ready. <laughs> I don't blame him. But you got to carry on. I, I do. You I do have on. to carry on. Um, so I am going to go and uh, I, I'm going to go and switch things up and I'm going to put Jasper into <laughs> my inkwell. Jasper uh, and Horace. So, you know. Jasper uh, and Horace together again. And then uh, to complete the trifecta, I'm going to spend two uh, and play Cruella de Vil. Nice! Uh, <laughs> With so, a foil. You know, exactly, yeah, it's the first foil card there. <laughs> so I'm going to use uh, Mickey Mouse to uh, challenge Cinderella. Uh, okay. So you're gonna, Mickey's gonna put three damage on Cinderella, uh, she has five uh, willpower, so she's still okay. Uh, what do you got next here? Well, luckily I have some ink in reserve. And uh, so I got plans. And one more, play Stampede. Oh, which <laughs> deal two damage to chosen damage care. That's right, since she will. Yeah. Probably in my last stance. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, you really, you couldn't, if you couldn't deal with Ariel. Yeah. And I only need one more point, she gives me two, but I'll go ahead and draw anyway. I'll just slowly play my turn. I'm kidding. I will let the quest for the area little put me all over. Uh, and there we go. Yeah, yeah. It was it was fun. It was <laughs> fun. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. uh was was there any uh like you know hints or tidbits that you know could have helped me uh do better? Uh things things for the Lorcana player to be uh to keep in mind as they, they start to make their way. Well I think one of the things is when you I think when you alter your hand at the beginning of the game, like you, you really want, yeah, I think you have too many high cost stuff. You really want to try to get at least one character that's one or two costs mm -hmm. and then opening hand against this deck specifically because this deck is all about getting lots of friends out. You yeah, of friends with this deck. And that deck uh, is probably the more com uh, uh, strategically complex. Yeah. Free. And so, you know, for your first game in Tennessee, you know, yeah. kind of uh, up against her already, but uh, now I get to wear my crown. But next time we'll play this, I don't know, uh, in the Midwest, where, you know, in my, my place of hour, uh, and, and the result will be different, I swear. Uh, but until then, we have a lot more of Orkana content on comicbook.com, so be sure to check all of that out. And, uh, yeah, thanks for playing. Thanks for having me. It was awesome. Okay.